Hey guys, this is Echo Sourx with another tutorial for ADSR and MassiveSynth.com. First, if you're not subscribed to this YouTube channel, please sign up at youtube.com forward slash ADSR Toots, that's T-U-T-S. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you a couple of my uh, on how to make your pad sounds have a little bit more three-dimensional depth. So I have a pad pulled up right now. So right now it's a cool pad. I mean, it has all the elements of that type of sound. It's chill, has a good amount of reverb and delay. It has some spatial effects. Um, it's wide and it has the right amount of attack where it fits into the realm of a pad. However, it doesn't have a lot of depth to my ear. And this is what I love to do to create some three dimensional depth to a pad in Massive. I'll use my modulation oscillator and I will modulate the phase and position of, sometimes I'll use both of these in the same sound, other times I'll just do one. It, that depends on what wavetable you have loaded up. So if I pull up the, we'll turn on the, we'll turn this to zero, activate phase for oscillator one. And if I just hold a note, that's a huge change in sound. So right now, right off the bat, I know I don't want to modulate the phase with os oscillator one because it's going to really change the timbre of my sound. I don't want that. Let me turn off oscillator one and go to oscillator three. And I know just because I use mass up a lot, that the phase modulation on the virtual analog pulse width wavetable is not that great. It doesn't affect the sound that much. So right there, that's gonna be a candidate to modulate the phase. So I'm gonna take my fifth LFO and what I've uh, and what it looks like I've already done this preset, I guess. Um, when you load up the sine wave, it looks like this. But uh, if you just kind of drag this to where you're not actually getting that initial rise in the shape so it's just starting downwards it'll work a little bit better for this so make sure you have sync unselected and turn your rate down below halfway and then modulate the phase of a wavetable that doesn't have too much of where this phase modulation doesn't create too much of a change in the sound so now we have it's just a little bit of movement but it's, it's something that when I start to stack multiple voices you know, you start to get that uh, rich sound. So I could even take this down to negative 12 just to get a different pitch value in than with the oscillator. All right, let's load up, let's, let's, bring, let's bring oscillator one back into the fray. And I'm gonna modulate the position of that because remember, if I start to move this around while I'm holding a note, it, it's not as intense of a change as with the phase on oscillator one. So I like that. I'm actually going to detune this so it's an uneven value, the further thicken of the sound. So I'm going to use the same LFO, and I'm just going to modulate this one ever so slightly because I don't need a lot of this. And let me turn on oscillator three, and let's, I'll play that same progression again. So it's just one of those one of those or a couple of those tips and tricks that can really add that kind of analog polish to a sound if you will it just takes the the soft synth digitalness and makes it a little more analog sounding it creates a little bit more three-dimensional depth you can use this with uh, leads too it doesn't just have to be for pads but hope you guys like this tutorial hope you found some useful tips and tricks in it for your pad design inside a massive if you guys have any questions let me know below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can as always thank you so much for watching I will see you next time.